Hey everybody, Quint Lear's New Home Sales Com. I'm super excited to have Kimberly Mackey on the program. Kimberly, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for, for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. So It's been an awesome show. How's the show been for you? Oh, fantastic. The energy is, is great. Builders are building. They're excited. They're a little nervous, uh, but that's good. That's a really good thing. Kimberly is an industry expert, um, creator of New Homes solutions new homes with an s solutions.com you've got a lot of great content there you're working with a lot of builders what are some trends that you're seeing right now in 2018 what i'm seeing is people being stretched so very thin and particularly our sales managers are just really getting stretched beyond belief so today i'd like to talk to you a little bit about the challenges that they're facing and how they can stop majoring in the minors which is really what they're doing they spend all their time doing all this what i call administrivia and not doing the important things because they don't have time to get to the things that really add that return on investment which is of course the sales now you jumped ahead because what i was going to say is that you've got a specialty and your specialty is new home sales management um, you are supporting training coaching the managers out there let's talk about that you talk about the, they're being stretched thin what's the biggest mistake that they're making right now the biggest mistake is getting sucked into that everyday stuff, not knowing when to offload, not knowing when to delegate, and even who to delegate to, because in many cases they may not have an entire team or a dedicated team to do things, but you can identify those core players on your team who have strengths that you might be able to tap into in addition to their regular duties so that all of it doesn't fall on the sales manager. Give me some percentages. So uh, what should a sales manager be doing today? Is it um, coaching? Is it administration? What, you know, is there a percentage, a magic formula? What would you recommend? I do believe that there is, and, and the sales happen in the field. So if you're finding yourself seven days a week in the office, which many of them are, they don't even get two days off, then you're doing it wrong. You are, you're not out there making it happen in the field. You've got to be coaching first and foremost, holding your people accountable. And if you're going to hold your people accountable, you got to hold yourself accountable too and lead by example. So I, I use a 10-5-2-1 formula to make sure that my people are driving the traffic that they need to. And yes, I believe salespeople need to drive their own traffic in addition to builder traffic. Um, to having those appointments, helping them to have the right kind of appointments so that they can convert the sale. And if they're doing that, they should be getting 50 sales a week in this environment, or 50 sales a year. I'm sorry, 50 sales a week would be amazing, but 50 sales a, a year per each salesperson. But the only way that's going to happen is if we have our sales managers out there helping them to make it happen in the field. So you said 10, 5, 2, 1. What, what does that mean? I'm glad you asked that. So 10 is the average number of traffic, not qualified, but just traffic that needs that a salesperson needs to see each week. We know on average. Now, some people may not need to see that many. They may be fine with three traffic or five traffic. It depends on the quality level of that traffic. But on average, we know it's 10. Each salesperson needs five first appointments each week. If they're having five first appointments each week, they're going to have two follow-up, be back, second, third type appointments, which leads to one sale each and every week. And in my world, you get two weeks of vacation. So it's 10 traffic, five appointments, one sale. Yes. 10, 5, 2, 1. 2 is the BBAC appointments. The BBAC. So you know what? I'm really impressed because you got this stuff on the, you know, the top of your head. It comes out. You've got it down. How do you do that? What's, what are some of your techniques to stay current, be able to produce content, make an impact? I work with a coach. I'm always working with coaches to help hold me accountable because we all have to hold ourselves accountable. It's easy to justify things in the mirror and say, well, you know, I was just really busy this week or I was at the builder show, so I couldn't get this done. If you're not working with somebody you have to answer to, to say why you didn't get it done, you're probably not going to be as productive as you could be. I use a system. I have my 10521 system that I use that's easily scalable for any size builder and work with that each and every week. So it's not hard, it's just dedication and persistence. Let me ask you what might be a silly question. You know, you have different levels. You have the salesperson, a sales manager, a sales coach, a sales director, a VP. What, what are the different roles? What, what positions should a builder have? Because it starts getting you know, confusing. It really depends on the size of the builder. 
So once a builder is is doing more than like 25 homes and they have a model center, they need to have a dedicated sales team. Okay. You know, ha- asking a builder to build and do all of this stuff that a lot of our guys try to do all themselves, they're just not going to have the sales volume that they're looking to be able to take it to that next level. Now, beyond about 50 to 75, now you're getting into really needing somebody to be dedicated to managing that sales team. So, and then beyond, you know, you may may have a need as you scale up and you get to be a larger builder to need a VP and that general sales management, that coach out in the field. So more of the strategic for the VP, but your sales managers need to be those people who are out in the field coaching. So at 20, 25 sales, they need a team of sales, they need to delegate to salespeople, one at about 50 sales, then they need a sales manager, and then what was the other one, 80? You yeah. need... Yeah, once they get above uh, once they get above that 50 75 mark then that's where they really need to have that that dedicated manager great suggestion so I'm gonna open it up to you. anything that you want to share with our audience that maybe some encouragement because you you know you've seen the highs and the lows you've been through the downturns speak to the manager right now that just feels discouraged I know salespeople are hard to manage what do you got to say to that well I still walk a mile in in my builder shoes so I'm out there actively managing sales teams still this is possible. I do it in 10 to 12 hours a week for each client with what is normally a 70 hour a week job for a sales manager. So if you just focus on that return on investment and you focus on those right things, the sales will happen. Everything else tends to take care of itself. It's amazing how if I don't do those things, they either don't happen because they weren't necessary or they get delegated to somebody else and they happen elsewhere. And last question. Who's had an impact on you? Tell me some of the mentors that have uh, spoken into your life and have been an encouragement. Oh wow, boy, we're we're gonna go we're gonna go way back. So I have to give credit to Bob Schultz, who launched me on, on a national uh, national platform. I've worked with Myers, um, you know, for years as a I was on the other side. So I was in the corporate world. I was hiring all of these people. Tom Ritchie. Uh, the late, great Dave Stone, even going through all of the accreditation at NAHB and learning that, I've been blessed to work with some of the best and brightest. Chuck Shen, I mean, I'm, I know I'm leaving people out here, but uh, yeah, I've, I've worked with the best and the brightest, and it really, I'm, a, I'm a, an education junkie. You've got to put the good stuff in to get the good stuff out. What are you studying now? Any new books? Anything that, uh, that you say you've got to read this book? So um, I just actually, timely, just finished Lean In. So, which, you know, we've got to be more embracing as an industry of everyone, of of all cultures, listen to different perspectives, and how to do that in a positive way. And that's that's been something that was very inspiring to me, that then it's just a book that I just finished. So, uh, I really just enjoyed it. Thanks for sharing. You've given us some great content. How do we connect with you? Tell our audience how we can connect. Um, You can find me at newhomesolutions.com. Uh, two S's in the middle, uh, or you can just Google Kimberly Mackey and you'll find me. Great content. Thanks for making an impact. Thank you very much, Quint. Appreciate it.